If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to solve the question on your own first before listening on. In part A, we are asked to find the dot or scalar product between vectors A and B. So let's take a look at the definition of the dot product. And so according to the definition, to find the dot product of two vectors, we multiply their magnitudes, and then we also multiply by the cosine of the angle between their directions. Now, for vectors A and B, the magnitudes were given to us as being 4 and 3, so we can plug those in. And then for the angle between the direction of vector A and vector B, we can see from the diagram that that angle is 90 degrees, so we'll fill that in for the angle. Now, of course, if we punch this into our calculators, we're going to get 0 because the cosine of 90 is 0. And so this becomes the correct answer to part A. Now, similarly, we can write the dot product of vectors A and C in the following manner. The tricky thing about this dot product is that we don't know the angle between the two vectors, vectors A and C. Let's go over to the diagram and see why we don't know that angle. Now, in order to determine the angle between vector C and vector A, we have to align the vectors so that they are so-called tip to tail. So in effect, what that means is we can grab vector C and slide it, keeping it parallel to the original vector C, and we slide it until the tip of vector A is touching the tail of vector C. And so the angle that we would be looking for is actually this angle right here. However, like noted, the question does not give us that angle. So we're going to have to try to evaluate this dot product in a slightly different way. And to do that, we're going to draw a new picture here. So let's draw vector A once again pointing to the right and vector B pointing straight up. We would notice that the sum of these two vectors would simply be this vector right here, which points sort of up and to the right. This would represent the sum, so we can write that as A plus B. Go back to the original diagram, and you can see that vector C is almost the same thing as this red vector sum that we just drew. The only difference, of course, is that vector C is pointing in the completely opposite direction. And because it's pointing in the opposite direction, vector C is essentially the negated version of this vector. Whenever you negate a vector, you change its direction. So we can say, in other words, that vector C is equal to negative of vector A plus vector B. Remember, if vector C had been pointing up and to the right, then we simply would have said that it's A plus B. But because its direction was completely switched around, we have to set it equal to the negative of A plus B. So we'll come back to our original dot product, and we're going to substitute right here for C this expression here. So we've gone ahead and made that substitution for vector c, and then what we can do is actually distribute this minus sign to both vector a and vector b. We could then actually distribute vector a into the parentheses. And so what we would have is the dot product of vector a and negative vector a, and then we would also have minus the dot product of vector a and vector b. Notice that this is a minus sign right here because we're multiplying a positive by a negative right here. So a positive times a negative will keep that negative. Now for this dot product right here, why don't we take that negative sign and just move it out to the front. So then we would have negative of the dot product of vector a and vector a minus, now over here we have the dot product of vector a and vector b, but that's what we determined in part a of the question. That turned out to be zero. Now here, we're going to have the dot product between vector a and vector a. Remember, that can be written as the magnitude of a times the magnitude of a times the cosine of the angle between vector a and another copy of vector a. Now obviously, vector a and another vector a would have an angle of zero degrees between them. So we're going to enter a zero in for the angle, and then little a was given to us in the question as being four. So we'll plug that in. And so when you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get negative 16, because the cosine of 0 is 1. And so this is the correct answer to part b. We can now move on to part c, which asks for the dot product between vectors b and c. 
as before, we're going to replace vector c with the quantity negative the sum of vectors a and b. And then we'll go ahead and we'll distribute that minus sign. We could then distribute vector b into the parentheses. Now in front here, once again, we have the dot product between vectors a and b. We already determined that to be 0 in part a of the question. So then we're left with negative the dot product of vector b and vector b. So that would be the magnitude of b times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between vector b and vector b, which will be once again 0 degrees. So let's go ahead and plug in the magnitude of vector b, which was 3, and then 3 again, and then the cosine of 0 degrees. And when we compute that, we get negative 9, and this is the correct answer to part C.